everybody so I thought I would do another video on how I make my Caribbean wave bowl because I've made a lot of them now this will be number 17 and some of the ways that I do things um, I mean everything is pretty much the same but there are some differences and of course by now I know what I'm doing so I'm not hesitant about what I'm doing so um, yeah let's get started I've mixed up one cup of resin this is art resin now one cup is too much for this project but I bought this ring mold which I've been wanting to try to make some rings that I saw online once and bought and they came not looking anything like the picture they weren't as pretty so I want to try to make my own so I've also bought Some epoxy mold release and then I got this on Amazon because I've been having trouble with my molds um, sticking to the resin and I think that's I've come to learn through making some inquiries online with other groups that it's because of this so if you heat your resin too much when you're getting rid of the bubbles it will stick to the silicone mold so I've ruined my alphabet mold that way and then a little mold that my daughter-in-law bought so I could encase a four-leaf clover in some resin for my grandson um, that ripped so so now I'm going to start using this every time I use a mold like this because I'm tired of ruining expensive molds so I still use the cling wrap for this bowl it's the only bowl I use it for because it gives such a great pattern on the inside of the bowl that looks like kind of like the movement of a wave and I love that um, <clears throat> so these are shot glasses from the dollar store they're an ounce each and this is the perfect size I've come to realize for what I want to do now let me just get my gloves on I forgot about my gloves here so let me just do that I'm reusing my gloves because of COVID. They're a scarce commodity right now. I do have some on the way, but they're taking forever to get here. And I, um, I'm i starting to run a little low. I'm a little worried. So I've been reusing my gloves now for a few weeks, trying to get as much life out of them as I can. And sometimes I'll only throw one away because it's beyond continual use, but I will, um, I'll use the other one. This one's got resin on it and it's starting to flake, which worries me. I don't want flaky resin to fall into my art. Okay. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up my stones and um, I started to use the, these diamonds, these acrylic diamonds which I get from the dollar store. Uh, they're the best price there than anywhere I've ever seen. And um, because the other stones, which I'll show you in a minute, I ran out of and I couldn't find any more at a reasonable price. And then I found some online at Laura's Art Corner and she sent me some. They were still uh, a little more than I wanted to pay, but they were definitely better price than Amazon. So, that's these, which I had found at a little dollar store, well not a little, but a dollar store in a little tiny out of the way town called Merritt. And you can see that these are like shaped like rough pieces of ice, which I really love the effect that gives. So now I'm using a combo because I don't want to run out of these too soon. She also sent me some in a mint color, which I didn't order, but she sent me them in. I don't know when I'll use them, but I'm sure maybe in my mermaid splash they would go nicely. And then because the resin, uh, these are deep into the resin and you um, kind of lose the sparkle. I don't use the sparkle diamonds anymore for this process because they um, are very expensive and hard to get as well. So these are just little, uh, they're just little plastic vase fillers that I get at the dollar store for, I don't know, like a dollar a bag. And 
they're great because they still give you the illusion of bubbles uh, but they don't have the facets. I'm not losing the sparkle because there is none. I just get the bubble effect. And then this is recycled glass that I bought um, at a Canadian recycler back east. And I like this stuff, but it's really expensive. Like five pounds of this was $70 and five pounds fit in this Tupperware or this Rubbermaid perfectly. So, I mean, it's lasting a while because I'm using it sparingly, but that's a lot of money for this. So yeah, if I can't find any more of the rough ice plastic, I may be down to just using diamonds because they're definitely the cheaper option. Definitely the cheaper option. So I'm just layering the different ones in the cup here. And I'll add a few more of the little tiny vase filler. And that's that. All right. Okay, so that's ready to mix. Now, I'm still using the same, oh, I picked up the wrong one here. Hang on one second. I'm still using the same Bombay inks in, and I've numbered them now so that I know which order they go in. Um, so I've written number one is Aqua. Number two is Teal. Number three is Turquoise. And number four is blue okay I also purchased some little reusable silicone stir sticks which I will link in the, the description and yeah let's go So I pour equal amounts in each of these. I almost fill them to the top. Of course, I have to leave room to stir, but I fill them up. So this is for the four India inks. And then the one little one over here is for the white, for the wave. And then what's left, I put some in with the crystals. I just kind of cover them on the top. Put that in there. Okay, so we'll start with the aqua. One, two, three. Teal, the turquoise, which is a nice, I like the turquoise a lot, and then the blue. The aqua and the teal are very, very close in color, and really, I don't think you see the difference in the bold at all, but I still use it. And I take the flat end of this and stir. And I prefer to stir with these because I was finding that the popsicle sticks were soaking up a lot of the dye before it got stirred in and then the color wasn't as deep. So this, I'm not wasting any dye. Okay, so I'm just gonna set that down there. I know it's out of frame, but I just put it by the bottle so I know which one is which. Uh, let me just get myself some room here. Okay.
And then for the white, I've put um, my things in these little, my, my products in these little needle bottles because I'm also starting to do, um, oh, if I could just think, uh, coasters. And so I need to be a little more precise with this sometimes. Uh, so this is the Casting Craft. This is the uh, White India Ink. And um, in my first video, I didn't get the lacing because I didn't use enough of these products, especially the India Ink. So I put about 10 drops of Casting Craft. And then the India Ink, which you should always shake up because it separates. So I'll give it a good shake. And then uh, I put quite a bit of this in now because this is really what causes the lacing. So I give a couple of good squee squirts. It doesn't come out and drops, it's too runny. But I just give it a couple of good squirts. And I stir it up vigorously. I didn't find that stirring it faster or slower made any difference whatsoever to the amount of lacing I got. Okay, so that's my mix is done. Now I'm just going to stir up If you pour it in and let it sit, it gives it a chance to run to the bottom and it makes it easier to stir and make sure that all of your um, glass or your pieces are covered. Because it's important that they're all covered so that they stick. And also then stirring them just mixes up the layers. Okay. Now, all right, so cling wrap on here, try to pull it out so that there's as few wrinkles as possible because wherever you see a wrinkle, the, the um, resin will be thinner there. And I've actually had it, it tear on that line that, that the, res, the um, wrap has made. Okay, so we're starting with Aqua. And again, I'm starting from the outside like I always have. And then teal, and this, these are the two colors that really there's not a whole lot of difference between, especially once they're, they're set. I really don't, I really don't see a difference. And if the colors aren't perfectly mixed into the resin, which is the case here, I don't care because it it, um, it never shows at the end and also it just helps it look a little more watery. So I've got a pretty big wrinkle there that I'm trying to get out. Okay. Now this one is turquoise. What is it? Turquoise, yeah, my number three. And then, last but not least, the blue. And then I still do this because I, I like the look. Um, 
I add a little bit of blue ink and then spread it around. Because I think it looks pretty. It gives it that swirled out look. Try not to leave any big lumps of it. Try to smooth it all into the resin. But leave it, don't overwork it or you'll lose your swirls. It'll just become a solid color. Okay, now we're just gonna quickly pop and I've learned how not to burn my, oh, this thing is not turning off like it's supposed to. I've learned how to not, um, burn the plastic. <laughs> so I'll just stay right on the resin and just do quick short bursts and then you should be good. Okay. I'm just trying to pull out a couple of wrinkles here. Okay, you're always going to have some, but it's really good to get as few as you can possibly get. Okay, now I'm going to put down my the crystals, and I always use a just a plastic spoon I can throw out because it sticks to the a regular spoon and you just can't get it off. So, and just start putting these around the edge. Now I'm doing this before the white because I actually really like um, the effect of the white when I blow it, it goes into uh, the crystals a little bit. If I do the white first, sometimes uh, the crystals end up going over the white and I don't like that. So I'm gonna put these down first and then I'll do the white foam. Um, if there's one thing about this bowl that's been problematic for me, and it's been a real problem with almost everyone, is that when I hang it, the crystals fall off. And my last one, they all fell off to the point where I just threw the whole thing out, which was tragic, but I couldn't, I just was angry and I couldn't see a way to fix it. I was really not happy that that happened. So, um, so now I'm gonna leave this longer today because I feel like I've shortened how much time I was letting it sit. I went back and looked at my video and was kind of shocked that I let it sit for five hours. I've been letting them sit for three, well, about four, three and a half to four. And I was like, oh, no wonder the crystals are falling off. It felt like it was ready to go, but it obviously wasn't. Now, um, also the last, not the last bowl I did, the one that fell apart, but the one before that, I tried something new. I put down the crystals first. I mixed up just enough resin for the crystals, put them down first let them sit for an hour and then did the rest and that helped the crystals not fall off because I don't think any did or maybe just one but what happened was the crystal rim was so much more solid than the rest that the bowl didn't shape very nicely or not the way I wanted it to it still looked fine but just didn't look like I liked them to it was difficult to shape once I hung it. And um, yeah, so, so that didn't really work for me. So now I'm going back to this, but I'm just gonna let it sit for the full five hours because it was 
just so frustrating. It's, it's been very frustrating to me. This bowl is actually a commission. Somebody um, has pre-ordered one. So this is for her. And I've got to try to get it in a certain shape on the mold because she likes a certain shape. She's already bought one bowl and um, she prefers shapes she's seen since. Her bowl was quite curved up and she wants the more spread out bowl. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I always put extra on the ends because that's where the end of the wave is. When you when the bowl is made that looks like the end of the wave. And that's where you're going to have more foam on a wave. Is it the crest of the wave? So that's why I always put extras here. So that I get a big fat crest of the wave here. into a thin spot and then we're done with those okay now we're going to do our white foam okay so here's how I do this now I just run it across like this, like this, like this, like this. Okay. Now I use the heat gun. Before I used the straw, but I don't use the straw anymore, I use the heat gun. this nozzle on the end, use this nozzle here to focus the heat. I don't have it too hot, I have it on about medium and I just use low. resin heats up a bit then the white will start to move. I'm going to turn it up. It's taking too long. to put the heat gun on it, which will help us get some of the lacing. Okay. And for the first time in forever, I made a hole. Wow, I haven't done that in so long. That's gonna be problematic later. I think I've done a hole since the first video I made of this. Oh well. Alright, a couple of these blew away. Let's put them back. Alright, 
right now we're getting some nice lacing in here, which is great. So let me take you down to see it and then we'll um, we shall wait for five hours. Let's see if you can see it. There we go. See that nice lacing happening there? Love it. Okay, we're back. It's been uh, four and a bit hours. So here is what I'm using now to mold these bowls. So remember in the first video, I used a candle holder that had a mosaic glass pattern on the outside and that transferred to the inside of the bowl. So I went to the dollar store and bought a couple of these uh, glass vases for like $1.50 or $2. And this is also another shape. And so I can use either side of this depending on what I wanna do. Uh, but so far I've, I've used mostly this side. Um, I've taped it down with masking tape, but I found uh, on one occasion that actually stuck to the underside of the bowl. So now I've put cling wrap over it and just taped it down. And this is, I've used this, I don't know, a dozen or more times and it's what is working best for me uh, to take the bowl and give it the shape I want. Just gotta grab one thing. Okay, and I also have my uh, sponges, my makeup sponges that I use to make forms. I also have some tin foil that I've scrunched. I had a couple of these that I then wrapped in saran wrap, but I can't find them. So I may have to quickly make a couple more here to get the shape I want out of this bowl. So I'm gonna lift this off the tray. Oh, I'm making such a mess today. Um, let's feel this. Yeah, this is feeling good. It's probably stuck where I burnt that hole. Oh, yeah, it's stuck pretty bad. Let me get it. Uh, find a way to get this off. Okay. All right, so we're going to put it on here like this. Oh, I should put my gloves on. I'm gonna grab some new gloves, hang on. Put some new gloves on so that the bits from the old one doesn't stick. Okay. All right. So I like to pull this end out and tuck the other side in a little bit. Push this down. under just to give it some shape pull it away from the side of the bowl a little bit I'm also going to add this Now, sometimes these can leave a bit of the shape of the sponge on the bowl, and I don't want that. So I'm gonna tuck this round one underneath to keep from getting that triangular shape in here. Um, 
but I'm gonna quickly squeeze up a piece of foil and get a better shape in there. Now, people have been asking me to sign and number these and I tried stamping my own little uh, aluminum rounds or whatever they are, but uh, it didn't work. So I bought some brass ones. I don't know if you can see there, but I got a guy to put my signature in the bottom and then I stamped the number in and I just popped these in the bottom so that my pieces are signed and numbered. Just stick that down in there. Okay, let me get some foil. foil and just squash it into sort of this curve and I can let that drop out put this in okay that should work I'm stick one of these and just stick it out a little bit more this person who ordered this bowl really wants the sides to flare like an, another one I did a few days ago. So I'm just trying to make sure that happens. They don't want the one that's tightly curved into itself. They want one that's sticking out more. So I'm trying to do that right now. Okay. That looks good. I like the shape of that. I think that looks pretty good. I might stick this in here just to bring that out a little bit more. Let's see, where is that? And it looks like this is good timing because I don't see any falling off, which is making me very happy because it's been a real plague for the last dozen bowls or more where the the crystals keep falling off and it's just like driving me crazy but I don't see that happening right now so that makes me really happy okay all set now that's gonna sit for 12 hours and then we will come and take it off and hopefully we have a bowl that makes my client very happy see you hey everybody soon. So it's been 10 hours. No, it's been a good 12 hours. Um, I've been out for a little while. Just got back and uh, this is firming up quite nicely. Take it off the mold. Here's all our bits, all our stuff. Not much fell off of this one, which I'm really happy about. So I feel like I finally found the happy medium. That's all that fell off, which is not bad. And here she is. Look how pretty. I think she turned out lovely. I think the woman that ordered her will be very happy. She's uh, very much like the one she wanted. And so now comes the fun part. This often does not want to come off very easily. And I lose a few crystals here too that came loose. Uh, sometimes I just don't worry about it. Sometimes I stick them back on with E6000. So, but if it's just the odd one here and there and I don't miss it, then I don't care. I just leave them off. I often end up spending a little while picking this cling wrap out of little crevices that it tends to rip away from. I like to get as much of it off as I can. So I'll spend a little while with tweezers pulling it out. This one's coming out pretty good for most spots though. There's always going to be a spot or two where it sticks. there. The 
bowl is still a little bit pliable as you can see. So that will remedy itself within uh, the next few hours. Definitely by the morning, because it's uh, about 10.30 at night right now. 10, 10.45. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna let this sit all night and by tomorrow it'll be good and firm unless my mix was off, which has happened once or twice and it didn't set. I think that's what happened to the bowl that I last made where everything fell off of it. I think my mix was off and it just didn't set up. There goes a chunk. I saved the crystals that fall off because they're definitely reusable if I don't glue them back on. most of the plastic off whoops and it turned out really beautiful I think really nice lacing there looks really pretty and again there so yeah I'm pretty pretty pleased must say so there we go that's how I make this bowl now and it works pretty great okay thanks for watching see you on the next one bye for now